Hi. Um, I've made a little setup here to demonstrate how a uh, gearbox can actually affect the spatial resolution of an, an encoder um, via the backlash associated with it. Um, so what we have is we have a little motor right here and the uh, you know driving axis is down here and at the top we have um, an encoder that comes with this uh, type of uh, motor, just a little brushless DC motor. And so this encoder has, I think, a, it does like 128 pulses per revolution. And then we have a gearbox of a 27 to 1 ratio. So I'm able to get, um, you know, 27 times 128. And then because of the way a quadrature works, I can multiply that by 4. So I get around 14,000 pulses per revolution with this encoder. And on the bottom, I have a 14-bit uh, magnetic uh, encoder that, uh, or ro rotation sensor or something that they call it now. But uh, what I can do is, they're, they're, this is 14 bits, so that's like 16,000 pulses per revolution, so they're approximately the same. Um, so what happens is, as I rotate this, this um, axis, I should be getting, you know, the appropriate similar angular outputs for this and this. But what happens is there's a backlash that's associated with this gearbox that actually reduces the um, resolution of the encoder on the top while the encoder on the bottom is okay. And the way that this works is that um, you have like a gear and as you move the gear, the gears are meshed. And so both, both, the form, both after the gearbox and before the gearbox are spinning in sync. But you can imagine if I switch direction there's a little bit of an air gap. And this air gap, as like the as the the output shaft would would twist, the input shaft actually wouldn't rotate. And so an encoder on this side, which is effectively this one in this example, wouldn't rotate. And so you can actually lose a bit of spatial resolution from this, which um, can actually play a pretty significant role if you're trying to achieve really accurate kind of uh, controls or um, I work in haptics, so uh, if you want to have like an accurate uh, sense of position at the end of the device, it's pretty dangerous to use something like this behind the gearbox um, if you have to gear it up for like a, a small device. A lot of times people will try and use direct drive mechanisms, um, but then you run into problems of not being able to generate enough torque, and then there's, uh, there's a ton of different things like harmonic drives that cost a lot, but there's always going to be sacrifices when designing something. So. Um, you can take a look here though, so you can actually see the code being output or the, uh, the uh, values being uh, printed to the uh, serial interface. So as I rotate these, they'll be approximately the same. There's I think a little bit of an offset. Before and after the gearbox, as I'm just doing continuous rotation, you can see they're updating. But then what, we'll, what I'll actually do now is I'll just do a tiny little motion. And this I can feel on the end is within the backlash range of the motor. And so what's going to happen is the encoder that's down here, I'm going to be able to pick up on the rotation. And up here it's not even going to sense the rotation because kind of like I showed in the example, the shaft won't, uh, the, the gear on the back won't actually be engaged. And you'll see it right here. So before and after the gearbox, take notice of what they are. And now... I'm going to start moving within that range. So before the gearbox will stay uh, constant, and after the gearbox, you can actually move it from like, you know, here it's 157.7 up to 161. So I get around four degree motion within that range. And now you can imagine if I had a, an arm, and you know, the position is approximately, um, you know, the arc length is approximately the angular, uh, it's, well, it is, but it's the change in angle multiplied by the distance. So you can imagine if I'm out here, if I have a four degree change and I have a really long arm, then I effectively really have a large space that I can move in without actually sensing it back here. So that's the dangers of using this. And I'll throw up any uh, code I used in this um, with, some API, with some APIs written to written to drive this uh, interface, this board with the Arduino Due and uh, 
uh, actually there's a there's an encoder library uh, that was written for the Arduino that I used for this. All right, thanks.